So this is Jason Williams. I'm coming to you from Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in New York. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, short talk uh, for you. And so in order to get that started, I just wanted to point out uh, the DNA Learning Center homepage, which you can visit anytime. And in fact, uh, when you go to the homepage, I think it was featured since I just uh, saw it a moment ago, among the other things, including uh, me to sign to series, which is here, um, there's, there's lots to see. And we're going to hear um, from Dr. Moore in just a moment. And the also, you can register since we do these once a month, uh, the, the registration is already open for the next one where you'll be able to meet Dr. Tolkien. And I'll also mention just before we get started that uh, DNALC summer camps are open. And so you have the ability to go to those as well. So with that said, I'm gonna stop sharing here. Thank you so much. And yeah, I'm very excited to be telling you today a little bit about the work that uh, we're doing in my lab at Cosmo Harbor. But I wanted to start with um, a little bit of an introduction about um, who I am. So, um, so you can probably tell by uh, my accent, I'm actually not originally from the States. I'm from Madrid and Spain in Europe. And I decided to go um, to medical school uh, when I was still quite young. Uh, I went to the European uh, Medical School program, which is a little bit different to the States. It's only a six year um, program in total. Um, and during medical school, I soon realized that I was really interested in science and really interested in research. So throughout um, those six years, I actually ended up doing um, a lot of research um, estates in different labs, not only in Spain, but also um, all over Europe, like in England, in Germany, and in Sweden. And after I graduated um, medical school, I decided to come here to the States to do my PhD. And I actually went to uh, New York City. I went to do my PhD at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. And I recently graduated. And after that, I moved to Cosmo Harbor to start my own lab. So uh, what do I actually um, study? So our lab really works on uh, trying to understand the process of cellular senescence. And we try to frame our questions in the context of both um, cancer and aging. So what really is um, cellular senescence? It sounds like ver a very complex program, uh, but really it's just a biological process in which um, cells that are um, that have normal um, proliferative capacity, they are like proliferating um, in a dish or in vivo in response to a stress, usually in the form of, of DNA damage, they will stop their proliferation and they, they will enter into a really stable, a stable um, a state in which they are arrested and you cannot really force them to uh, proliferate anymore. It's very interesting um, because these cells, they not only stop proliferating, but they change their morphology a lot. So you can see here in some uh, microscopy images from cells that we have um, in the lab that when they are uh, proliferating, they become, um, they look slim and enlarged. Uh, however, when they uh, stop um, proliferating and they enter into senescence, they become uh, very, very enlarged and flat. And it's one of the um, characteristics that allows us to identify these cells when we're doing experiments in the lab. Now, besides this um, stable arrest, um, senescent cells are also um, characterized by being very, very pro-inflammatory. So they secrete a lot of um, cytokines, which are really inflammatory molecules that uh, we call senescence associated secretory phenotype. And really um, the role of these saps, it's mainly to uh, help recruit immune cells like T cells, NK cells, or macrophages that we have in our body, whose role in turn is to get recruited um, by these pro-inflammatory signals and then come and clear these senescent cells. So like hopefully the tissue um, could go back to a normal resting state. So it's in essence a good or a bad thing. It kind of depends, right? It's, a, it's really a time dependent con um, concept. So evolutionarily speaking, senescence evolved as a mechanism that would allow us, for example, to try to suppress tumor development. So you can um, picture a tissue in a normal homeostasis that in response to a stress, for example, might acquire an oncogenic mutation. 
And then this cell that has acquired an oncogenic mutation will enter in response to the DNA damage, will enter in senescence. So it will stop proliferating. It will secrete all these pro-inflammatory factors and the immune cells of the body will get recruited to come uh, eliminate this cell and then the tissue will, will kind of go back to normal. So in this context, it's highly beneficial. The problem with senescence, however, is that as we age, our immune system is not really able to clear the senescent cells um, anymore, or at least not as efficiently. So these senescent cells end up um, accumulating in our body, and they're constantly generating these pro-inflammatory signals, trying to get immune cells to come and clear them um, that are really not able to do. And this uh, chronic pre um, pre-inflammatory microenvironment, it's really uh, deleterious and has really been shown to contribute to um, the development of a lot of age-related uh, pathologies. So um, my lab is really focused in trying to um, understand really how this immune surveillance of senescent cells um, doesn't really happen, especially as we age, and how can we uh, potentially try to develop therapeutic strategies that we can use in age aging and age-related pathologies. Now, why should we actually care about aging biology? Why is this relevant? I think if we um, stop for a second and think about it, it becomes really obvious that um, in the last uh, century, the percentage of the population, um, not only the US, but really uh, worldwide, that has um, that is reaching over 65 years old has gradually increased. And um, it's only expected to uh, become larger in the future. And what we do know is that this increase in elderly population, it's associated with uh, the accumulation of a lot of uh, chronic age-related um, pathologies. We also know that um, from economic and sociological studies that the benefits that we could ripe from targeting the aging process itself that is really underlying the development of all these pathologies would really outperform the individual gains that we could get from targeting a specific chronic diseases. So really in my lab, what we try to do is to understand the contribution of um, the senescence uh, program to organismal aging. And uh, what really, uh, what real role do senescence um, cells play in this process? So we do know that um, senescent cells accumulate as our body age. Uh, we know that um, as a young individual babies, we have very few senescent cells. And as we age, um, the burden, the number of senescent cells that we have in our body, um, it's exponentially increasing. And this happens for two major reasons. On one hand, because um, we are accumulating um, DNA damage in our body over time, and uh, the number of cells that will become senescent will progressively increase. And at the same time, as I was just mentioning, or on endogenous immune system or T cells or NK cells are not really um, that able to effectively eliminate senescent cells as we age because they themselves become senescent too. We do know from um, previous genetic studies um, that have shown in mouse models in which uh, we genetically were able to eliminate senescent cells, we see that um, these mice are able to have not only um, a longer survival, but also to live a healthier life. So increasing both the lifespan and the health span. So there is, of course, a lot of interest in trying to uh, mimic this, um, these findings by using molecules that we could um, administer um, to already age, um, age mice or potentially age individuals without having to do a genetic mouse model. But of course, um, if we want to target, we want to eliminate a specific cell type, we need to really go back and understand the biology um, of this cell type and what makes it different from other cells in our body to try to develop a specific approaches. So if we consider senescent cells, besides uh, them being uh, not replicating as we mentioned, um, they also have a couple of other characteristics. They are enlarged, they have um, increased lysosomal activity, uh, which is the basis for an assay that we call essay beta gal, which basically is measuring um, the lysosomal activity in cells and cells that have um, an increase on it will become blue. Um, they also have heterochromatin foci in their nuclei. 
they secrete a lot of pro-inflammatory uh, factors, as I was um, mentioning at the beginning. And one of the very first um, approaches that the field tried to use to eliminate these cells was to try to inhibit um, the secretion of pro-inflammatory molecules. The problem with this is that you inhibit kind of the inflammation, but you don't really get rid of the senescent cells themselves that will persist. So this will be uh, an, a pharmacological approach that you would have to be constantly given. And on top of that, um, the compounds that were really used to do this are kind of general, um, not very specific compounds that are also associated with significant side effects. Another characteristic um, that is very interesting about senescent cells is that they are always kind of on the verge between their senescent state and dying. So um, to prevent entering into um, the death route apoptosis, what they do is they um, upregulate a lot of anti-apoptotic molecules. Um, so one of the strategies that has been used to try to selectively eliminate them is to give them um, compounds that would specifically um, inhibit this anti-apoptotic mechanisms. But again, uh, a little bit um, VRT compounds associated with side effects and different senescent cells can upregulate different anti-apoptotic anti mechanisms. So really, um, when I started my research in the field of senescence, one of the uh, things that I thought was, well, could it be possible potentially to find a surface molecule, something that is expressed on the surface of these cells that is not expressed in any other cells in our body? And if we um, can identify such a molecule, we could potentially try to develop strategies to uh, bring the immune system to target them, right? And potentially not only the endogenous immune system, but even um, an engineer, a synthetic immune system that we could create, right? And we could program these cells to go and recognize the senescent cells. And that is really the basis of um, CAR T therapy. So um, CAR Ts are um, chimeric, chimeric anti and receptor um, T cells. And the process for um, generating them really consists on isolated T cells from a patient, endogenous T cells, that we will infect in the lab with a construct that encodes a surface protein, which is the CAR. It's a receptor that uh, will recognize a specific anti and a specific protein on the target cells. And it will activate um, the T cells that have now become um, CARs to um, go and specifically deplete the cells that are expressing the anti and that they target too. So I, CAR T cells were initially developed in the context of cancer and they have been um, highly successful in hematological malignancies, but no one had really thought about repurposing um, CAR T cells to potentially target a cellular state such as senescence. And that was really um, what I thought we could try. <laughs> so to do this really, our, our first step was to try to um, identify um, surface molecules that could potentially be expressed on the surface of senescent cells. And it needed to be something that was expressed on the cells, but not on other cells in the body. And this was a particularly challenging uh, thing to do, to be fully honest, there were really not many. And it took a lot of back and forth um, to be able to identify such a molecule. But um, ultimately, um, we were very lucky to be able to find this protein that is called UPAR, which stands for um, the Urokinase Plasminogen Receptor um, Activator. So UPAR is this surface uh, molecule, it's a receptor for UPA, which is a protein involved in the coagulation cascade. And UPAR seems to be really uh, potentially um, upregulated in the surface of senescent cells. So um, having identified that, um, the next step that we took was to try to develop um, these synthetic T cells, these CAR T cells that could uh, recognize uh, the expression of UPAR and come and eliminate um, the senescent cells. And um, once we had them um, developed, we wanted to really uh, test their potential to be therapeutic in age-related diseases. And we decided to, um, to test their, um, their therapeutic um, angle in a model of diet-induced um, liver fibrosis, which is um, it's a highly um, prevalent disease in, in the world. It's actually uh, the most common uh, leading cause of liver transplant right now. And uh, to try to uh, model this, what we did was to uh, put the mice into a diet um, 
for several months, and this diet made the mice develop liver uh, fibrosis, very severe fibrosis. So we then injected or um, treated mice with a dose of four um, CAR T cells, and we monitored them over time to see what would happen with them. And what we saw was that if you see here in blue, the number of senescent cells that we're seeing, and we're detecting them here in blue, uh, thanks to the S. E. Veragal um, assay that measures increased lysosomal activity, while the number of senescent cells was very high in the controls. Mice, mice that were receiving or UPAR CAR T cells had much less uh, senescent cells, and they also had much less uh, fibrosis in their livers, and they were much more healthy. So these results were um, highly encouraging to us and really show the potential of orsenolytic CAR T cells to potentially be a treatment for age-related pathologies. The work that we are currently doing in the lab is kind of trying to take this a step farther and we are um, trying to understand or try to um, leverage the whole potential of senolytic CAR T cells to target the aging process itself. But of course, if you think about a setting aging in the um, laboratory setting, it is it's quite confusing and it's quite difficult, right? Because we cannot really, it's hard to mimic the human lifespan in, the, uh, in only a few years in the lab. So what we try to do is to, um, we try to understand how the age of um, the animal models that we use, in this case, the mouse, correlates to human lifespan. So uh, we know that uh, mice that are about two to three months would correlate to about human, um, 20 human years. 12 months is around middle age, 40, and 20 months it's 60, about 60 um, years old. Of course, it's still really hard, right? Because a 20 year old is not a human baby and a 60 year old, it's really um, it's still a very uh, young human person, but it's kind of, we need to make um, some, um, some adaptations in our work to try to mimic uh, the human process. Um, and the kind of um, experiments that we're currently doing in my lab, um, it's really trying to infuse different doses of senolytic CAR T cells into H mice. And we're trying to um, study on them, both the health span and the um, lifespan of these mice. So we're uh, very interested in trying to understand how uh, physically fit these mice are. Uh, for example, we put them on uh, treadmills and we monitor um, how long can they run and what's the maximum speed that they can reach. And we also try to measure their, um, their coordination, their balance, as well as their strength. We are, in addition, trying to understand how are their metabolic profile, their uh, glucose tolerance, for example, and um, trying to understand health, their health span. And we, of course, uh, monitor them over time to try to see whether we could see survival differences in mice that have received or senolytic CAR T cells or the controls. Um, it is a challenging um, field to study, but we are really, um, we're really interested in it. And I think we could hopefully, uh, we'll see uh, very interesting findings in the future. Um, so really, um, just to recap a little bit what I've been showing you um, today, I just wanted to um, give you some final um, key points. Um, really uh, trying to understand that cellular senescence is a biological process that is really key in the context of aging and age-related pathologies. Um, that UPAR is a surface protein that is upregulated on senescent cells, and this allows us to develop um, CAR T cells that is specifically target um, cells that are expressing U part to eliminate um, these senescent cells. And the, the U part CAR T cells are potentially therapeutic in age related um, diseases. And with this, I just really want to uh, finish by thanking you uh, for your interest today, for inviting me um, here to tell you a little bit about my research. And of course, I want to thank the members of my lab as well as um, collaborators.